Back in 2013, Xbox took to the E3 stage to announce the next evolution of gaming, the Xbox One. The new Xbox touted advanced hardware and features that were set to wow the audience and gamers alike, but as the reveal began to unravel further, it became increasingly clear that Microsoft was making something that the fans, they just didn't want. Instead of focusing purely on games, Microsoft was looking towards the future. The console had a heavy focus on online. You always had to have a connection, that way your games could stay up to date and cheaters could be caught immediately. And Xbox would imagine you buying most of your games online, something that was only popular with Steam and PC gamers at the time. And well, it backfired. Sony easily took the generation over with the PS4 and the Xbox One was really just left in the dust. The future that Microsoft was envisioning just wasn't the one that the fans wanted. Or, well, maybe they just didn't want it yet. Because now, halfway through 2019, with the gaming space being taken over by huge players like Amazon with Twitch, Google with Stadia, Xbox with xCloud, and PS4 coming in with the new partnership with Microsoft Azure, things, well, things have changed. I remember when Xbox first announced the Xbox One, I was actually super excited. I had just recently gotten into PC gaming and loved downloading all of my games online over Steam without having to go into the store and actually buy a physical disc, and I was already kind of sold on this always online future. Hearing about the Xbox being more like PC when I was younger was just super exciting to me, but as it turned out, it wasn't as exciting for most other people. And as the years have gone on, it's really been a battle online between the people who say that the world really isn't ready for this always online future and other people who kind of are just embracing it, mostly the younger generation, right? But the point I really want to make for you guys here today is that I think 2020 is going to be the year where, well, this all changes. With the upcoming release of the PS5 and the next gen Xbox in early 2020, I think it's pretty obvious at this point that there's going to be a lot of changes coming our way at the beginning of next year and, e and even going forward that have a lot to do with online. People for years in Reddit comment sections have been arguing that the US and the world in general just isn't ready for this online future yet. ISPs are holding speeds back and a lot of people don't have access to the kind of internet that would be needed for this totally online future. But I would beg to differ. And I think 2020 is going to be the year that a lot of people have proven wrong. Because what a lot of these people that are arguing in comment sections don't understand is that we're already living in an online world. I mean, hell, the younger generation is basically on their phones or on their computer or somehow connected to Instagram, Facebook, Twitch, YouTube at all times already. So having them just accept an always online world isn't going to be that hard. And on top of that, new players are starting to grow and come into the space like Google with Stadia, who are going to offer extremely compelling packages for users that don't really care about maybe the highest speeds and the highest fidelity, but just want to be able to easily click a button and go play their favorite games, you know, with all their friends. And yes, it is still going to be a while before you're able to say, hey, I can stream this game over Stadia and it'll be just as good as if I have a custom built PC at home that I'm playing with. But I don't think it matters. At the end of the day, what this new future is actually all about is just getting everyone involved. Gaming has grown so much over the past 10 years, as we can see with the rise of eSports and just prize pools in eSports and just viewership for games on YouTube and Twitch and all platforms in general. And I think what this new online future really represents is just a way for everyone to get involved. That doesn't mean you don't have to buy an expensive console, an expensive PC, or just any kind of hardware to get started. You can just pick up what you already have, like your iPhone, and just stream it right to your phone. And if that means having a little bit of lag early on, well, I think for the large majority of people, that's just okay. But it's not just the online nature of this new next gen that I'm expecting. I'm also seeing a lot of microtransactions, loot boxes, and more just free-to-play games becoming more prominent. I know there's lots of people online that like to argue that they wish they liked it the old way where you could just buy a game and own it and have everything and not have to worry about buying other things. 
But I think this new wave for gaming where a lot of things are free to play and the money that is made on these games is kind of through microtransactions is actually not only all right, but actually better. And that's because it allows so many more people to just jump in and get started with gaming. Having all of your games be free and easy to join and just get started with means that everyone across the globe can all come together and just join in games with their friends. I mean, think about Fortnite, right? You were able to join on your phone, your Switch, your console, your PC. It doesn't matter. They don't care. And it's free for everyone to just get started. Meaning any of your friends across the globe, as long as they have an internet connection, well, you can play and talk with them and game with them all night. But it is scary, right? Because games like Fortnite do have sort of predatory tactics where they try to convince a lot of times kids to buy these really expensive skins, sometimes 20 plus dollars, just so they can look cool in the game. But honestly, is there really a big problem with that? The thing is, at most times, parents are going to be the ones controlling the money, and for anyone else buying these things, that's completely out of your own volition. And I think it's awesome that developers are able to kind of monetize their games by allowing people to just buy things when they want them, and just play the entire game for free with their friends. I can't imagine before, you know, 20, 40 years ago, if people had said, oh, let's just all play our games for free together, anyone would be complaining. But nowadays, I think a lot of in a lot of ways, it's just the amount of change is scaring people. And they don't want to allow this new completely online future where microtransactions are a thing, and you always have to have an internet connection. But I think what a lot of people are missing is all of the benefits. The thing is, this is what the consoles are kind of seeing and trying to tap into along with people like Amazon and Google. They see that this is the future, that gaming is growing at a massive pace with the growth of esports, as I've already mentioned, to just really gaming as a whole, now being bigger than movies and all other entertainment combined. Gaming is here to stay, and I think all the big players are finally realizing it. But not only that, they're capitalizing it on it in a way that includes everyone in an easy and seamless way. And while it can be really scary knowing, hey, you know, maybe if I buy my game, I don't own it. And hey, look at all these transactions that they're trying to force down my throat for me to buy. That's, these are scary things and it's something we haven't seen in the space, you know, until really present day. But at the end of the day, I think these things are actually good. It means everyone across the globe can now get involved in gaming and everyone can watch their favorite streamer and just enjoy the time and everyone can just sit back after a day of work and just have some fun on the games that you know, these developers really just want to make for everyone to love and enjoy. I think 2020 is going to be the year that my dream, the dream that Xbox thought of when they first unveiled the Xbox One back in 2013, is finally going to be realized. We have so many new platforms like Google Stadia and Xbox xCloud coming out that are going to revolutionize the way that people are able to not only play games, but play games together. It's going to include more people from around the globe. It's going to have more games with more kind of just possibilities. I'm talking thousands of people in one online environment with no sharding and just things that we haven't even thought of yet, like people seeing each other's screen as they play as Google Stadia kind of presented at their reveal at E3. But overall, guys, I think this new environment, wall scary, and very kind of controversial in many of the communities within gaming, I think this is the right place to go. It's scary not to own your own games, and it's scary to have to always have an internet connection to play with your buddies unlike before. But I think we're growing to a place kind of globally where internet is going to become more and more stable, more and more people across the globe are going to have it, and just allowing people without the ability to maybe own or buy a console or PC, you know, allowing them to play on their phones is something that really people don't talk about enough and is kind of magical. I know it's a scary time, and I know a lot of people are pissed about what's happening, but I think overall, this move in the space is something that could really, really propel gaming even to the next step. And while it seems like esports and things may be in kind of a bubble right now, and maybe even gaming as a whole is blowing up maybe a little too fast, I think these kind of changes with the cloud and just an always online infrastructure playing with everyone across the globe is what could really solidify gaming as the top dog it's really been showing itself to be within entertainment. And another thing I love about this future being pushed by people like 
Google and Microsoft is just how quickly things can change. For example, at Bethesda's conference this year at E3, they presented Orion, which would basically reduce the latency for people playing on all of these cloud platforms on all of the games that use its API. It's these kind of changes that people don't expect that really can revolutionize the space. And it's only because all of these big players are pushing and pushing for all of these changes, whether they be scary or not, that we're able to get all these great new enhancements with many more just like Orion that I'm sure are to come. And like I said, there is a lot of people that will never back down or are gonna be pissed that they don't own their games. Hell, they might lose them if their favorite service goes out of business. But I think there's so many people that just don't care about that, for one. But also, new services are gonna open up for people that do care about those things. If, there, if there's a market for it, it's, it's gonna get attacked. So overall, guys, it, I think it's scary where we're going for gaming in 2020, but I think this always online, microtransaction heavy future, where developers can make their games free and easy to access for everyone, is gonna be something that's quite amazing, but also really scary. It's gonna be something where a lot of people maybe just give up on gaming as a whole because they were used to playing games, you know, just on their local hardware and saving it to their hard drive, you know, when they were growing up. But at the end of the day, these scary new changes are something that I think is overall better because it means more people get to play games. More people get to play games for like cheap, a lot of times free in many cases like Fortnite. And really, gaming as a whole just continues to get to see its amazing astronomical growth on platforms like Twitch and just YouTube and everywhere in general. We're going to a scary place, everyone. But I think this scary place is somewhere we really want to be.